Hello, random viewers, and welcome to another random episode of something. Um, I'm going to be doing another airplane build where I'm going to try to replicate a, a famous airplane of some sort. So, today I've selected the ME163, which was the uh, German rocket powered fighter in World War II. And it, it was a pretty interesting one, and I'm, I'm going to try and build that. I'll give you a time lapse, and then we'll try and fly it. Alright, I just finished building it. Um, so the real one had a little propeller on the front for electrical power. This thing's not going to be using electrical power. Editor, could you please put a real picture right here? And um, as you can see, it's it's not completely different. Um, yeah, no engine in the game is powerful enough, so it has three of these little engines embedded in each other. Uh, that's just because the real one used hypergolic fuel, and there's none of that in stock KSP. I mean, I have some Kerbal Engineer and Visual Enhancement mods, but and Joint Reinforcement, but besides those, this thing would work in stock. Um, it's sitting on one of its wheels, that's okay. Uh, let's see, yeah, it, the real one did not have wheels in the wings, it had like a two wheels, a wheel here and here on an axle, and it would detach right after takeoff, but um, you can't, it, and then it had a retractable skid for landing, but we can't do that in Kerbal Space Program have a retractable skid, so it would have to be all the way open, which would be lots of drag, so we're just going to go with the wheels for now. But um, yeah, let's try this out and see if all that, those three engines can give us what we really need, so. And then we'll give it some power. What's our thrust at? 14 kilonewtons. That's not bad. Wish the exhaust looked a little bit more like the real one, but whatever. And we're gaining speed quite quickly. Let's see, can we go up now? Oh, that's weird. Um, negative, please. Uh, negative, please. I don't know why those things are inverted. That's annoying. Oh, that's a bit much. Okay, this needs some work. Okay, here's another test flight. Let's uh, see how this does. Hopefully a little bit better. They're pitching in the correct direction, so that's good. Yeah, I moved them back slightly and added some more decoration here, which act, which helps increase lift. And it looks nice. So, um, so that's a win. All right, let's try and pitch up gently now. Nope. Let's put caps lock on. The real one would start pitched up, so. so that has a lot to do with it. Alright, um, can you go up now? Gently, please. 
Um, it really wants to pitch down pretty bad. How badly does this thing have to pitch up? Um, pretty bad. We can try making some edits to it, but let's see. Full power. And how quickly are we burning through that fuel? Pretty fast. I feel like the real one would have been a little bit louder. I can't hear a thing with it. That's really unfortunate. It looks correct though, besides the wing pods. And yeah, that's a little off and weird, but it would be blended better in the real one, but... I mean, it works. And Yeah, that one would climb at about 70 degrees usually. 60 to 70 degrees straight up. This one can't exactly do that. It kind of slows down. Let's see what it can handle though. It just doesn't have the thrust to weight ratio. It's crazy. It's try it's stalling. It just doesn't have the power that those hypergolic fuels provided. I bet as it burns fuel though, it gets a little bit faster. That's pretty good. We're at two minutes in and it still has fuel. Um, previous versions I tried to build would run out of fuel way too quickly. And uh, yeah, that causes issues. But this one, this is a little better. You know, I might try the uh, the other variants of these engines because that might give us a different sound. Uh, and maybe more atmospheric thrust. Slightly less efficient, but I'll look at those. Oh, now that we're, we've gained some altitude, now we're starting to get some of that power that I was talking about before. Let's see, it can climb at 50 degrees. I mean, 45. Let's try 50. So I guess it's just some altitude. This, these engines aren't built for low altitudes. So what this thing was, would do, it was a bomber interceptor. They call it a fighter, which, I mean, it was. But yeah, it would climb almost straight up like this at ridiculous speeds. As you can see, it keeps gaining speed. That's what the real one was kind of known for a lot. It just was incredibly fast. And um, then it would shoot bombers. It had about one run at them, and then it would run out of fuel and have to turn back kind of go up, shoot some. I might turn around and might go in for another pass, but then it would definitely be out of fuel. Wow, four minutes of fuel. The real one had eight, but that's not bad for a Kerbal replica. So yeah, then at this point it would roll over, probably, and then go after those bombers, wherever they were. Wow, we're through the sound barrier, I think. And yes, because it had hypergolic fuels, it could actually stop its engine and restart it, which is something even a lot of modern spacecrafts cannot do. But they were able to do that during World War II, which is really impressive. So yeah, let's, we're about to test its gliding capabilities. It's not behaving too well right now. It doesn't like the transonic region. We're just going to throttle back a bit. Oh, it's trying to do something. Oh, it's the thin atmosphere. That's the problem. All right, let's kill throttle and uh, attempt to turn around. Oh, wow, it's gaining speed fast. I shouldn't have gone that high up. All right, just for fun, I will try and land it the way the original was, and that was with just a central line of gears, so you had to work very hard to keep the thing level. Let's go and find a nice flat field. That's how the real one landed, too. It would look for a nice field. Oh yeah, this is going to be difficult. Brakes. Please slow down. Then the SAS will do its best to keep us on one wing. And then it catches on one wing and falls over. Look at that. That's really not bad. Alright. Um, I'm going to make a few modifications and make it a lot more like the real one. And then we'll see what we can do. Alright, I'm done with my edits. It looks a lot nicer now. Um, the wings are better positioned, a little more realistic, and I was able to get the wheels just how they were on the real one. Um, I should probably mess with the 
uh, what's it called? The suspension more. They're a little too bouncy, but that's fine. Um, yeah, this is what it would look like, only there would be a straight bar between these and the wheels would be a little higher up, but it looks fine and it detaches just like the real one. So yes, we'll watch that now. Oh, and I added a fourth engine in there to make it look nicer, so. And it also gives it the acceleration that it can climb properly. See, now the exhaust looks a lot nicer. And the motors are turned off on these wheels, so. Here you can watch the launch just how it would happen for an ME-163 during World War II. And yeah, they'd bounce like that. One of the big problems was those things bouncing up and actually hitting the plane. Uh, you can see them in this there. But yes, this is... Oh, that's maneuverable. Oops. I must have modified it a little too much. Pitch up, please. Pitch up. I need to limit the authority of these. Sorry. That's still a bit much. I'm going to show you that climb now. Yep, there's 60 degrees right off the bat. Just fine. Well, it's actually gain, losing a little bit of speed, but it'll gain that speed right back here in a second. Or not. There we go, now we're gaining speed quickly as it stalls. Come on. Stop that. It's getting higher up and now those engines are gaining some thrust. Yeah, that one to give it the nice exhaust is much less efficient, but at least it looks a lot nicer. There we go, there's 65 degrees of climb and it's fine. I just needed some altitude and to burn off a little fuel. And yeah, then it can climb to whatever altitude the bombers it was intercepting would be at. And there's the 70 degree climb that was occasionally used. Okay, this is about the altitude that World War II bombers would be at. So, they'd probably be a little bit higher. But yeah, then once it's up here, it can really, it actually has a lot of fuel to maneuver, which I think the uh, German version might have had. Um, it might have been able to do a few passes over the bombers, unlike what I said earlier. I'm, I'm starting to remember that now. Maybe it could do quite a few. Not quite a few, but like four or five instead of one or two. Alright, at this point it's running out of fuel, so it would probably begin heading back towards base. There we go, I'm going to cut the engine early just in case I need a little bit of fuel. And uh, it would then land in a field beside the runway where it took off from, so I'm going to land right beside the runway in this flat, grassy area. Alright, here's my retractable gear instead of a, instead of a skid, but it works pretty well when it doesn't explode. I came in too fast last time I tested, so I did explode, but it's unfortunate that that wasn't on camera. However, I've learned that if you just come back and do some crazier maneuvers back there to slow down, it works fine. And I'm going to try and glide over to the runway, or closer to it. This has this will help us lose even more speed. So now I'm going to level it out and hopefully bring it down really gently. Sorry, I need to look at it from behind, but I need to I need that to make sure I don't die. All right. And there we go. Exactly how the real ME-163 would fly. Uh, I, I doubt you'll find many others in Carbal Space Program that are this accurate. So, uh, I hope you all enjoyed. Please do like, comment, and subscribe. If you're into World War II things, please do share this video. And comment on whatever uh, replica aircraft you'd like to see next. So, I'll see you next episode, and I hope you all have a very nice day.